Sarlo from the, the Stock Swoosh, and also Catherine Rudy Vera, Bull Tech Chief Global Market Strategist. We'll try to put all this together with um, what Susan talked about a few minutes ago. Uh, uh, Catherine, I can start with you, and that's kind of the market being down today. And we'll get to the China talks in a moment, but the market being down today, it seemed like on the growth concerns coming back. A few weeks ago, we said, well, we're worried about global growth, then the market comes back, and all of a sudden those concerns go away. But today, whether it's Atlanta Fed or the manufacturing data, the business spending data, I guess those concerns are back. How concerned are you? I'm not concerned. And actually, Connell, every time the market sells off with some data like this, I mean, there were some bright spots in the data today, then I'm recommending uh, long positions to my clients. That's something that I've been recommending to my clients, Connell, since December of last year. Remember in December, mm -hmm. we had the uh, combination of variables that really took the markets down, and that was aggravated by this risk that everyone was talking about of U.S. recession. That's not imminent, and I, it's a firm conviction that I have. I think that China grows 6.5 percent. The U.S. grows above 2.5 percent. Europe is stagnant and will continue to be. Right. such as the case with Japan. So I'm actually very bullish on, on U.S. equities and global growth this year. And we did, uh, Melissa, kind of trade uh, in fairly strong fashion into the close today. You know, to Edward's reporting, maybe the optimism is building here that something gets done with China or at least, you know, in, in bits and pieces we make progress. Well, I don't have 100 percent conviction that we get a deal done by March 1st. The market believes that that's going to happen. Clearly, we've been rallying ever since December 26th. The market's taken off. I'd love to see that happen. However, I do have confidence that Trump will try to get a deal done before the 2020 elections. But the stock switch tip of the day is don't panic if we don't get a deal done by March 1st because the market could sell off. We've been rallying for a while. Right. I believe a deal gets done, but, you know, we've had these talks before. This has been going on now for seven months, and it remains to be seen. And I think Gordon's uh, comments earlier about taking a hard stance with China will ring true. Trump put a hold on this for 90 days. I don't think he can do that again. No, but there could be a wrinkle in all of this, ladies, because let's talk about Huawei. And that's something else that Lawrence just spoke about in his report. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo did tell our own Maria Bartiromo this morning that the U.S. will not partner with countries that use technology by the Chinese, Chinese telecom giant. If a country adopts this and puts it in some of their critical information systems, we won't be able to share information with them. We won't be able to work alongside them. We're not going to put American information at risk. Melissa, the other side of the trade talks is the Huawei situation. The CFO remains in jail, charges being brought, and Pompeo going around the world, especially in Europe. He just got back from there, and the hard stance against Huawei is not backing off. Does that hurt trade negotiations? I do think it hurts trade negotiations. Obviously, that's what I'm saying. I love 100% conviction. It gets done by March 1st. However, that that being said, the founder of Huawei came out and he rarely does interviews and said the U.S. can't crush us. I mean, they're on defense. They're taking a defensive position here. So it'll be really interesting to see. But where are American companies? This 5G stuff, where are they? We need them. We need to be the, them to be innovating. We are a world leader. We need to be doing more here, I think. And Trump's trying to make that happen. But I don't know what's going to happen now with this, like I said, by March 1st. OK, Catherine, you know, Melissa brought yeah. up the 5G issue. But the, the, that, mm -hmm. there's a lot riding on 5G. Look, we're years off from it being all over the United States and China and South Korea. But at the same time, the technology, there's more concerns. When we do get 5G networks, it's going to be much easier for a company like Huawei to infiltrate those systems and spy on the U.S. Yeah. and other countries. Yeah, Cheryl, I, look, I'll take the completely opposite point of view as, as Melissa. With all due respect, I think that the hard stance is absolutely working. We've been decades in this fight with IP theft. We're actually making uh, inroads with Chinese IP theft. And not only that, but China has already made several concessions, including reopening of, of imports, the dropping of tariffs on, on U.S. cars, um, paving the path for, uh, for joint ventures between U.S. companies and Chinese companies, and they're working on IP theft. I I think Huawei, the incident there, uh, also plays into our hand, the U.S. hand. I think the U.S. negotiating hand is extremely strong. I think a new tactic had to be taken, Cheryl, because IP theft, Bill Clinton talked about IP theft, complained about it decades yeah. ago. So yeah. I'm encouraged. I think we do get a, a deal. I think we get a framework deal. That's what the market's currently pricing in. I've thought it for the past six months. I think incentives are aligned, and we are going to get something before March 1st, at least a framework. A framework or that memorandum of understanding we've been hearing yes. about all day. Melissa Catherine, thank you very much. All right, let's move on to Facebook. Coming 